Hey folks, it's Ted here. It's Ted Speaks Truth. Well, we've had an exciting week. Goodness, uh, we put out our first video, which was um, with Ron's Basement on March 1st, 2024. And my goodness, what a stream it's been since then. Uh, we've uh, received over 117,000, I don't correct the exact number, but there was 117,000 people that have seen our videos since we opened this thing up on March 1st. So is that number right, Margaret Ann? Yes. 117,000. Yes. How many comments? Uh, 12, 1,900, I believe. 1,900 comments. And how many emails do we have so far? Uh, easily 225. 225. So we have been endeavoring to get back to everyone and welcome them to the community that we've put together here. And uh, we want to thank you for taking your time and joining us today. So a lot has happened. We've got a website set up, tedspeaks.net. We have internet set up as far as uh, emails are concerned, ted at tedspeaks.net. And now we got Margaret Ann at Margaret Ann at uh, tedspeaks.net. And um, we've put together a Facebook presence, a Twitter presence online. We got it all going right now. Nick is really working full time. So what I'd like to do today is let's read through some of the uh, some of the mail that we've gotten, because there's two ways to learn one from your own experiences and one from the other the experience of others. So we know that learning from other ex people's experience is a little bit less painful. So we got, hi, Ted. My wife and I rolled our 401k over into a precious metals IRA a year and a half ago. We went through American Hartford Gold to set it up and uh, set it up via equity institutional through equity trust company as our self-directed account custodian. We chose International Depository Services Group who have vault locations in Texas, Delaware, and Canada as our precious metals depository. After hearing you speak on Ron's basement, I told my wife about what you said concerning, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So she called International Depository Services Group and asked if the government could seize our precious metals from their depository. And guess what they said? Yes, the government can seize deposits from any precious metals depository. We were shocked. We had just paid them $550 to hold our metal for another year. They also want to charge $250 for each additional accounts to withdraw our metals. Interesting. Because you know what? It's a golden rule. If you don't, if, if uh, you want to hold the gold, the, ye who holds the gold makes the rule. So I don't know why you folks are, are letting the tail wag the dog when the tail's only 35%, say 40% of the whole animal. You know what I'm saying? So if uh, if you're going to appease the IRS and pay these taxes when they're due, supposedly, my question would be, would be this. Do you think income tax rates are going to go up, go down, or stay the same? Very important question. Do you think income tax rates are going to go up, go down, or stay the same? I think all of us feel as though income tax rates are going to go up. So when would be the best time to pay the income taxes, when they're down or when they're up? Well, I think it'd be better to pay them as when the income tax brackets are as low as they are. So if you concentrated on the 65% instead of the 100%, you would have something that's in your own hands right now and you wouldn't have to worry about it. So I would say that 100%, 65% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Would you agree with me? So the bottom line is here's, here's a, a couple that, that, uh, that rolled their money over that they worked very hard for. And now they not only don't have control of it, but uh, they're being charged fees. And now they realize that the, that the funds that were inside the depository could in fact be taken. So again, there's an old saying as well as uh, possession is nine tenths of the law. So if these assets are sitting inside of a, of a vault and this guy is holding it because silver has no counterparty risk, you either own it or you don't, you either hold it or you don't hold it. OK, now you can be holding it for somebody else. I mean, trust me, right? <laughs> Come on, folks, we have to wake up to this. These people are not your friends. The only two things you can be trusting right now is God and the periodic table. Now, there'll come a time when then our country will turn back around and we can trust each other again. But right now, there's no trust in the media. You can find it here. And I think the, I think you all realize that we are here to, to help you. So let's go to the next one. Ted, please send me the information I need to know. I'm 45 years old and I know you're right. The system is at its end and they will try to take all we have left. My mother just retired and sold her apartment. She has 100000 100, sitting in a Chase account, and I'm afraid she will lose it all there. I'm trying to get her to at least buy one ounce gold coins or silver. Have you ever listened to Kim Clement's prophecy regarding Trump? Yes, I have. There were nothing left. There will be nothing left when he takes power again. Also, regarding the Q alert, it's the same thing. It says gold will destroy the Fed. Correct. 
we will get a digital dollar now soon and then back to currency backed by precious metals with Trump. God bless you. My email is so-and-so. Well, William, thank you very much. I think you're right on target. Um, there is a new uh, financial system coming along and uh, is going to be replacing the current system that we have been using for a long time called SWIFT. So SWIFT is an acronym for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. And that has been the, the, uh, the monopoly holder for so long. The U.S. owns SWIFT. So if you wanted to buy anything from any other country, you had to convert your dollars into petrodollars. You had to per convert your currency into petrodollars. And there was a charge for that. Interesting. And then when in order for you to pay that money to the uh, to the company or a country that you're buying the stuff from, there was also a fee involved in swapping the petrodollars from your hands to the petrodollars of the new person's hands, the new country's hands. And then they charged the fee to go from whatever leftover petrodollars they would allow to be uh, not put into left in the government treasuries. So they would put take this money and they would put it into um, into the currency of the of the purchasing country but they charge for all that so the charge reach in every one of these things and through manipulation of the forex markets through the exchange stabilization fund they're able to do this but what is going to make everything safe and honest is silver silver is the people's money folks it has been for thousands of years and we're going back to that just because we're living in the middle of turmoil doesn't mean that that's the way it's going to stay all the time so as far as uh this young fellow is concerned he's on the right track Again, I would suggest that since the money that you're saying that you have in your account is less than 3% of the amount of money as a percentage of the M2 money supply on the U.S. debt clock, when you factor in the, uh, the credit derivatives and the currency derivatives as well, which is $629 trillion, and you add that to the U.S. debt, and there's only $20 trillion in the whole M2 money supply. So if you don't get yours, somebody else is going to, or it's going to be gone. So we're watching this happen. So the next one here is hi Ted. I wanted to uh, I wanted to say something to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make you His light shine upon you and His graciousness to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. Same to you. God bless you. Thank you very much. It is Sunday. I think it's time to be a little reverent. God's given us great gifts. We're all here together. We're healthy. We're warm, and you're in the comfort of your own home. And now you're getting truth. So. Uh, I'm so happy to have found you. My name is Ivan. I'm a disabled veteran. For years, I've been worried about my wife and children. I have felt something is wrong with the system. I am 100% disabled due to military service, so I don't work. I started to get silver and some gold with the saving of years, but I don't have much time. I was listening to you, and you gave the impression that I should not, I should not buy silver rounds, but to buy silver eagles. I bought silver rounds because it was the best the advice that I got. This uh, this, I got the wrong silver. I feel lost. I really want to learn about money, real money, so I can teach my children. May the most high keep you under his blessing. You know what the thing, the bottom line is you bought silver, stick with it. Okay. There's good, better, and best. Okay. Good is any type of silver. The better is some type of silver that's, that is uniform and it's recognized. And the best is the, uh, the silver that is the money of your country. So again, here in the United States of America, we're fortunate because we have the world's most widely recognized one ounce sovereign pure coin that's three nines pure. It's the, mo it's the most widely recognized uh, coin that's out there, one ounce silver round. Now we call it a round outside the country, right? But inside the country, we're going to call it money. All right. So if you focus on what the money is and what it isn't, it's not the paper. We have a whole collection of uh, defunct currency notes, and I'm holding them all. So why is that? Well, it's because they don't have any purchasing power anymore. We mean somebody exchanged their labor or their 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 uh, their assets for some of these one of these pieces of paper, and now it's not worth anything. Yes, can that happen to the doctor, dollar? It's going to, folks. It's what happens. It's all part of the the life cycle of fiat currency. Okay. So what I'd suggest is get your own money in your own hand. And the operative word is money. So money in the United States of America is silver and gold, American gold, and you know, American silver eagles. Underneath of that is constitutional silver, pre-65 dimes and quarters and half dollars and dollars. That is the money here in the United States. Anything else, of course, would be silver in and of itself. Okay, It might be sovereign silver from another country, or it could be a bar. At least if you're holding a sovereign coin of another country, it's more recognizable than a bar. 
because the bar has uh, may have a serial number on it. If it does have a serial number, what will have to happen is the person or the uh, coin, coin store or the pawn shop that's going to buy that bar from you must in the state of Maryland, and especially in Baltimore County and Carroll County, must hold that bar in their safe for a cooling off period of time for eight to 14 days. During that period of time, a police report is run to find out whether or not the bar is stolen. Now, you walk in with this bar, and this is what the, the owner of the store is going to have to do with the bar that he pays you for. So you walk in with a 1,000-ounce bar, you might expect to get $24,000. Well, no, he has some risk there. Besides, where else are you going to take it besides a coin store and a pawn shop? You know, there's not that many options that you have. Okay, So I was talking with one of the local coin stores here, and they were telling me they have gobs and gobs of these 1,000-ounce bars. Every time they would sell two monster boxes of American Silver Eagles, they would hedge it by buying a 1,000-ounce bar. Well, now they got their basement loaded full of these 1,000-ounce bars. So they're trying to figure out a way that they can move things, things around. So the guy went out to, to, uh, to the hardware store, and he said, well, I'll buy a hacksaw. So he tried to cut the silver bar with a hacksaw, and guess what? It wouldn't work. The hacksaw blades got, char got all gummed up with the silver itself. So that didn't work. So then he said, well, okay, I'll get an acetylene torch. Maybe I can cut the bar in half. Well, that didn't work either because silver is such an excellent conductor of heat that you couldn't concentrate the heat in one particular area long enough to actually melt the bar. So there went that. So now the next option is we're going to slice the bars into wafers, set them on a scale, weigh them, stamp them what the weight is, put the logo in it, and that's the way that you can get rid of your 1,000-ounce bars. But you still have to have the way to be able to do all this. So that's why I'm saying that if you're not in the business and you're not dealing with thousand ounce bars between different financial institutions, you're out of your swim lane. You need to stay in what it is that you're supposed to be having, not thousand ounce bars or whatever. You can certainly get them, not the matter that you can't or are supposed to have them. I think if you got one, I'd paint it black and just to hold the door open <laughs> because no one would ever notice that it's there. And if it does get hot, don't worry about it. It'll transfer the heat right to the door. Uh oh, <laughs> maybe the door catch on fire. Who knows? The bottom line, folks, why don't we just keep it simple? Keep it stupid, get the money, hold it yourself, and let's see where things go. So let's go. We got a, a, a caller or we got a question coming in. Yes, we do. Vincent has asked, hey, Ted, could you comment on mining stocks? Should I sell them for Silver Eagles? Well, why don't we talk about stocks a little bit? That's an interesting question. Um, and we did speak about this. The problem is, is most of you are confusing owning stocks certificates with being a possible beneficial owner of a stock account. What do I mean? Okay, this is a stock certificate, folks. Okay, and you see it has a, a unique identifier over here called a QCIP number. This QCIP number, what this does, it identifies those shares of stock belonging to this particular person, Norman Gordon. Do you see that? Okay, so he has the piece of paper, and if the systems were to go down, he has proof that he owns those shares of stock. My question to you is, what proof do you have? Do you have a unique identifier? The answer is no, you do not. So let me read something here to you. Those assets that you thought you owned, you're going to find out very quickly that they were used as collateral for a de derivative complex. Yes. When I'm talking about a complete financial wipeout and President Trump had talked about the fact that uh, there might not be any assets for people to come out of the back door at this point. What I'm saying is you ought to come out of this recession, re depression, whatever you want to call it, with assets. An asset would be the Silver Eagles or silver. I'm talking about Silver Eagles so much because most of the people that are listening are in fact here in the United States. But if you're in Canada or Japan or, or uh, um, any number of the other countries that we're hearing from right now, you need to concentrate on what the money is in your country. Okay. So let me read a quote that uh, George H.W. Bush put up once. He said, if the people were to ever find out what we have done, we would chase, we would be chased down in the streets and lynched. Interesting. Because you think you own the shares of stock, but the bottom line is if you had one of these, you turned it into your financial planner. Financial planner turned it into his back office. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But look at all these stock certificates. Each one of them has a unique identifier. They took these away from you, and now they, all you have is a digital representation of the stock certificates. And this was issued to a person or a company. See? Each one of them has a unique identifier. And also, take a look at the artwork on this. It's gorgeous. You don't have that either. So what's happening now is they stole your stock certificates, and they put it in a big group, 
And the owner of the stock certificate is actually the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, the DTCC. So this is very important information. So in terms of mining stocks, I mean, do you really own the stock? Do you have a stock certificate? Which stock number do you own? Same thing with crypto. I have a real problem with crypto. If they say there's only a million crypto units in that particular crypto coin, crypto coin, coin, huh? Interesting. Why do you use, why not crypto, uh, you know, electrons? That would be more like it, right? Crypto coin, they're trying to tag on the, the authenticity and the sovereignty of a coin. Okay, that's first the thing that gets me going. The second thing is, is that if you say there's only going to be a million Bitcoin and you're going to buy a Bitcoin, wouldn't you like to know which one of those million you own? Tell me. So if you're going to spend $64,000 or $68,000, because you know the market's up, you got to buy now, right? That's what people are doing in the stock market. The stock market has never been this high before. But if you're going to buy a Bitcoin for $64,000, don't you want to know which Bitcoin you own? Or you don't care which Bitcoin it is. You think nobody's keeping track of this? Come on. We got to wise up. Hi, Ted. Really enjoyed your presentations on Ron Baseman. I've been espousing what you have been saying about gold and silver for 15 years. Most of the people I have told this to think I'm nuts. <laughs> Welcome to the club. I've been a financial professional for the last 25 years with a few licenses. My question is, since you're not really keen on holding metals in a vault somewhere, are you recommending to hold it all in your house or hiding it somewhere? How about both? Put it in your house and hide it. Um, are you recommending to hold it in your house, hide it somewhere? I was thinking about buying more shares of and converting most of my metal to PSLV and Fizz, having the certificates delivered to me. Just curious. I look to, to uh, look forward to your answer. Well, again, I don't know what your age is, okay? But uh, I would consider taking those funds out of the tax deferred status Paying the taxes on it because we th all think that the income tax rates are the lowest that they're going to be right now. Did you know the highest income tax rate that we had was dur during underneath the President uh, Reagan? And the highest income tax rate at that time was over 90%. Now, what's called a marginal income tax rate. So you only got hit with that 90% if you hit like 1.2 million. But the bottom line is, if you're that productive to, to make an in a $1.2 million income, why are we going to disincentivize you to make anything more than 1.2? Folks, our tax structure is all messed up. Taxing people isn't about hurting them, okay? It's about helping our economy. If somebody's out there and they're creating jobs and creating opportunities, I think you want to foster that. That's why there are tax deductions. So at any rate, again, let's get back to the fact that if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And if you don't own it, somebody else does. And guess who that is? Those of us with precious metals. So I would like to say, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. <laughs> we do. So you have to get the real McCoy and this is the time you need to do it. Uh, what I learned, what I thought was going to happen today was the bank term funding program was going to end today. Well, guess what? It does end today, but not at midnight last night. It ends at midnight tonight. Isn't that interesting? Just read that. So I was wondering why, what, what's happened? Why hasn't the bank term funding program caused any kind of ripples in the marketplace? What's going on? So here's another one that I got. Hey, Ted, I have a comment question. One of your videos on YouTube. The question is how to get my silver IRA out of a depository without penalty. My, a lot of concern over trying to keep the taxes on an IRA that's going to grow tax deferred at a higher tax rate that you're going to have to pay when you finally take it out. Sometimes we're missing the obvious here, folks. Do the math. You haven't talked with a planner. You probably had never met one before, but now you have. And I'm not planning to be a a financial planner for you. All I'm trying to do is give you enough information so you can help make the right decisions or at least seek out somebody that does. All right. So um, we talk without a penalty. You mentioned holding other people's silver and they the same. Yes, we did work that out. And we did get a letter blessing what it is that we did. Because the deal is you cannot take constructive receipt of your metals. So let's suppose box one, two, and three comes in for you. But I take those boxes, one, two, and three, and I give you box eight, nine, and 10 of mine you're holding collateral for your boxes one, two, and three, right? So technically, you never took constructive receipt. Folks, they play with the language and twist and turn it every which way you possibly can think of. It's your turn to battle back. Now, I told you also, I'm going to be giving a little clue out for the next series they're going to be starting after the reset is over, meaning that silver's finally regained its rightful place. And we're going to be talking about estate planning because everybody has an estate and everybody has a plan, an estate plan, whether you have it or what you think you do or you don't. But um, in this particular case, what I'd like you to do is write down these two words, in, I-N, second word, terrorum, T-E-R-R-O-R-E-M, in terrorum. 
This is a clause that rarely is put into estate planning documents because what it does is it stops any type of infighting. So in the event that someone chooses to challenge the terms of your trust, they're automatically disinherited. So that keeps everybody honest and make sure that you, as the person who created the trust, make sure that your assets go to where they're supposed to go. That's it we're going to talk about. We're going to go back to talking about silver, okay? Silver is the money of the, of the, of the gentleman. There's an old saying that goes like this. Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of, of, uh, of peasants. And debt is the money of slaves. So when we have a, a United States dollar, it's actually a debt note, okay? So we're trading in debt, so there isn't any assets there. Interesting. Look at it a slightly different way. You don't have a whole lot of time left, folks. I don't know when the plug is going to be pulled, but right now the patient is on the gurney. They're ready to shut the machine down. And when it does, the currency shift is going to happen. And then what's going to happen is we're going to go from an asset from a zero backed currency issued by the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS.org. We'll get a little bit better with this. I am looking for a sponsor for a board. It's about $6,000. It'll allow me to be able to pull things up and I can show you math. I can show you equations. I can show you bond histories and why the the, inter, the interest rates is so important to a bond. And the longer the bond, the more volatile it is in terms of interest rate shifts. So this uh, this new board is called a VIBE, the IBE. It will allow me to show you a lot about how silver works. And I think it will be a very good instructional tool as well. So anyway, we're going to be putting this up to so you understand uh, uh, a little bit better, more clear. So the presentations will get better. We've only been doing this, I think now this is our seventh or eighth, uh, eighth or ninth day. Today's Monday. So we started on a Friday, I think. So um, <laughs> we're hitting the learning curve pretty hard here, folks. Ted, I have a comment, a question regarding one of your videos on YouTube. The question is how to get my silver IRA out of depository without a penalty. We already covered that. Okay. I suggest that you do some hard thinking about whether or not you want to leave it in tax deferred status, not own any of it, or, or take the tax hit on paper. Take constructive receipt of what it is that you have, turn it into American Silver Eagles, which is money, hide it in your house, and wait for the tax bill to come around by April 15th of next year. Now, since you're holding money, it's not an investment. It can't go down. I mean, silver can go down if it's manipulated much further, but obviously they can't manipulate it down any further. So here's the next one. I truly enjoyed your podcast on Ron's Basement. You offered some extremely compelling reasons for moving from inside the system to outside the system. I turned 55 next month and have made some progress regarding working on some of the sound money strategies, such as paying off debts. I would greatly appreciate any advice you may have to provide regarding potential steps to moving forward and getting out of 401k funds to alternative investment options. I sense the high level of urgency from your recent report. Yeah, I think you're very, very perceptive. Yes. That's why I came on here eight years to try to help you guys understand that the time is nigh. If you're not holding the money, you're not going to get it because for two reasons. Number one, they're running out of silver eagles. And number two, there's not enough M2 money supply to cover the amount of checks that are outstanding. The people can write against it. OK, so um, as far as this tax the first status, I think what we're doing is we're allowing the tail to wag the dog. And I think the dog should wag the tail. Don't you agree? Hello, Mr. Ted. Sir, my name is Anthony. I recently came across you and your message this past week on Rod's Basement as your new YouTube channel. It so happens that I am looking to turn a 401k from a previous job in, into precious metals. And until recently, I was under the impression that I would have to store it at depository to avoid taxes and penalties. So you're going to risk 100% of it for the 35% or 40% of the taxes that you may owe on it. And those taxes won't be due until April 15th of the year after you make the, the distribution. I don't know, folks. I'm not even buying green bananas anymore. <laughs> We're right on this cusp of this thing. It's been planned for so long. I've been studying it 11 and a half years. It should have happened a long time ago. We're living on borrowed time. So if you had the time, I would like to know a depository to avoid taxes and penalties. And uh, the workaround. The workaround is you don't take constructive receipt. Now, you have to know somebody that, that would uh, say, okay, here are my monsters, and I'll take yours in exchange. You hold collateral. Don't hold constructive receipt. So that making sense to you? So there is one in here that I wanted to go over because it's very important. And it talks about the, um, oh goodness, seems to be gone. Let's see. Had a bunch of drawings on the back of it and that's missing here. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. That was a good one. 
All right, so here we go. Thank you for the information you are sharing on Ron's basement. We have purchased some American eagles as well as some Canadian maple leaves, Australian kangaroos, and buffalo rounds. I heard you speak on the program that Americans should own American eagles. Many people I know also purchase silver in other countries' currency. When the dollar crashes, will the currency of these other countries also be accepted as currency? We should trade. Should we trade our Canadian maple leaves and other countries' currency in for American eagles? No. You're going to lose on that particular case uh, because there's a VIG. The, the coin store, whoever's doing this, is going to want to make money off of you. And I would suggest you made a decision, stick with it. Don't go back. Like um, like Sir Winston Ch Churchill once said, he said, the further you look in the rear of your mirror, the more clearly you may see the future. Okay? So you look through the past, but don't let the past be your guide for the future. You did the best you could. You at least moved into silver. So what I would suggest from here on out, stack American silver equals and dimes. Dimes, Ameri pre-65 dimes will give you the most amount of fungibility, meaning there's 14 dimes to one pure ounce of silver, okay? So if you remember that, you can figure out what the actual cost per ounce is in terms of uh, what the cost per ounce is in terms of holding it in terms of dollars, okay? So when the dollar crashes, will the currencies of other countries be accepted as currency? No, it won't be accepted as currency because currency is a representation of money in the, mo in the country that you're in, okay? So they will be accepted as silver, okay? And they will have some provenance to it because chances are people will revere that silver that you have, provided that it's widely known, they'll revere that piece of silver as being real. But suppose you have an obscure coin. Oh, well, this one's very expensive. This was $38,000. Look at the way this was stamped. It's not a matter of the way that it's stamped. You need the coin of the realm and you need as many tons of this as you possibly can. Now we have a chart. Some people are asking, what, uh, how much silver should I have? Well, if you want to be in the top 1% of the global population, which will allow you a fairly nice lifestyle, I would think, reach out to Ted at tedspeaks.net, send me an email, and we will send you over that, uh, that, uh, that link. We're trying to get the original copy of it, but for some reason, it's no longer available anywhere. So Nick has been working trying to either reconstruct it or find the original source of it, but it's not available. Interesting. So if it's not available, what do you think? Why don't they want you to have this information? Okay. So at any rate, next what I'd like to go into is this. This is very interesting. Hi, Ted. Something has got me troubled, though I have to be careful leading those that I informed of the information which I had gathered. Part of the reason for my being careful is that I only have pieces of information, which would lead to a complete conclusion. This has to do with the seed group. Great, great question. Wow. David, on the ball. This is a fabulous, fabulous question, and I'm going to show you what the deal is, okay? So, when you go in and you buy a share of stock, okay, this is why I want the board so I can point to this stuff and you guys will get it. So it's, it's the opposite, okay? So, at any rate, you go in, you give your broker your money, okay? You buy it. Now, the broker then sends everything to his back office, and the back office in most cases is a company called Computer Share, Okay? Computer share only deals with a company called Seed and Company, okay? C-E-D-E and Company. That's nasty. That's a nasty word. What does seed mean? If you're going to concede something or you have a reseeding hairline like I do, what does seed mean? It means to give up. Interesting. These are nasty folks, people. Look, okay? So then the DTCC is the one that holds the actual certificates, okay? And during Superstorm Sandy, right before then, there was a fire in the vault that held all the DT, all the uh, stock certificates with QCIP numbers. Imagine a fault, a fire in a vault. Oh, goodness. And then what happened was Superstorm Sandy came ripping up the East Coast, made a direct left turn heading westbound right at 55 Water Street, washed out the, 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 uh, the vault, out goes all the ash. What record is there as to who owns what? That's why you can't go back to your stockbroker and say, hey, I'd like that, that stock certificate. You don't own it, folks. So anyway, you send your money to the, to the broker. The broker gives it to the back office, which is Computer Share. Computer Share then gives it to Seed and Company. Seed and Company then gives it to the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, okay? The Depository Trust Clearing Corporation says, okay, fine. We'll take their money and we'll give uh, Jack five shares of uh, Disney stock. Or we're not getting the real shares. We'll just say that he has them. What do you mean there, Charlie? Well, hey, we actually hold the certificate. He's not going to get any kind of unique identifier with it. We can sell that stock as many times as we want. So then Seed and Company sends a message to Computer Share. Okay. 
Computer share then sends the message the stocks have been purchased and they're going to belong to the owner through the broker. The broker then, exactly, this is on the way out when you get the when you get your check, okay? It's then issued to the State Street Bank and finally to you. So this is the money going in, okay? You to the broker, the broker to the, to uh, computer share, computer share to seeding company, seeding company to the DTCC. They got your money. Now they're going to issue you electronically shares. So the issue is the receiving company to computer share to your broker, Marilyn Smith Barney. Okay. And if it's a, if it's a redemption, it goes through state street bank and finally to you. Look at this. How many counterparties are there between you and your money? All right. So now you have the stock and now you want to sell it. Okay. So this is you, you want to sell the stock. You go to your broker and says, I want to sell the stock. The broker says, sends the communication to the back office, which is computer share located in Australia. That's a continent, by the way. How are you going to find a warm neck over there to put your hands around, find out where your money went? So the, the, D, the computer share then sends a message to seed and company. Seed and company sends it to the DTCC that Charlie wants his money back. Okay. The DTCC says, okay, you can have his money. So they send a message to seed and company. Seed and company sends the message to computer share to the broker to finally State Street Bank your check and they give it to you. My question is how many counterparties between you and your money now that you own the stock? Well, there's one, two, three, four. That's your that's your request to sell the stock, okay? Then if the DTCC says yes, you can sell the stock and we'll pay you for it, that communication goes to seeding company. That's the fifth, that's the fifth counterparty. Then six, seven, eight, nine counterparties. My question to you is, what happens if just one of these counterparties is not available for some reason? Let's suppose your broker's out of business or the back office is down, uh, the computer share. Let's suppose something's happened with, with seed and company. Let's suppose the DTCC says, no, you can't have your money. Or seed and company says, no, we don't have the money to give to them, even though the DTC said we can. Do you see the kind of games? Versus simply rolling over under your mattress, reaching under the beds, uh, pulling out a tube and say, oh, here it is. I got it myself. Okay. So I think, I think that this is, might be a way that you should consider holding your assets yourself because these are all the counterparties that involve. So again, if I had that whiteboard, I could put this up there and you could see it. You could also download it directly from the, uh, from the screen. So again, it's about $6,000 is what they want. We've already put about $10,000 in marketing so far. So we're going to have to come up with some way to, uh, uh, to ask you guys to sort of help support our efforts here. Next question is here. Thanks for posting info on your channel regarding cash assets. Raise my concern level for sure. Question one is specifically about cash I hold in a brokerage account. Interesting. How many claims do you think there are against that cash? Do you think the DTCC will just let that sit there without claiming it in some way to, to pledge its collateral for like another loan called hypothecation or maybe a rehypothecation? So again, folks, it looks like my eyes aren't talking to you because I'm talking at the screen and everything. It will get better. There are better cameras out there. We'll get all this stuff in. So um, Schwab, do you place cash held at online brokerage banks in the same risk category as regular regional banks? Do they not have more stringent rules? Well, they do. The question is whether or not the rules are being enforced. And if they're not being enforced, you're going to get to enforce them. So it it it... it Again, it gets back to keep it simple, stupid. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Somebody owns it. And those that hold precious metals are the ones that own it. Because all the value, that, according to the extras pyramid that we talked about, and everything uh, above the gold, you got silver at the very bottom of it. So see, if I had extras pyramid, I could show you that up front. And I could show you this as well. So it would make a, a much more interesting uh, presentation for you. But we'll get there, okay? So does it matter if I buy all Eagles for 2024 is it better pick up other years and, slight, and pay slightly more? Actually, 2024 Eagles should be less expensive because they're, they're missing a, um, a read around the outside edge. And I've been asked not to talk too much about this. Isn't that a shame? So it was America. But anyway, because uh, they don't want any conspiracy theories about the diamond dust, which is proven to, to uh, this tracking technology to exist. So if you want to learn about it, simply Google Honeywell and videos and Honeywell brags about being able to put a tracking chip in each pack of cigarettes that's inside of each carton, each many cartons inside of a case of cigarettes, okay? So if they can develop the technology to put a tracking chip in one pack of cigarettes, I certainly think they can put a tracking chip inside of American Silver Eagle, which is actually money of our country, okay?
So what I would suggest, as long as the type ones are available, pay a little extra and get that. It's not a matter about what you pay. It's what you get. You've got to buy quality at this point because when the crap hits the fan and you're walking around with Eagles, you don't want to have any competition with what it is you want to buy. Somebody else comes walking around with a thousand ounce bar dragging along the back um, and they're going to try to compete with you. That bar may not be real. The person doesn't recognize it. You have to have something that's recognizable. Okay. And that's not recognizable. So said I have a precious metals IRA. Listen to all this talk about digitizing your life's efforts. And the digitizing is slicing and dicing, and they're creating so many units out of the same uh, same block of purchasing power that you earned. So, again, your purchasing power represents energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's here. So that energy is shifted to somebody else. So when somebody does a number on you or the jilt you or whatever else, that money isn't gone. It just the purchasing power shifted to them. What I'm trying to do right now is I see the big picture, and it's going to shift into silver eagles and gold eagles but not quite in that order because of the mining ratios. Again, if I had another screen, I could put this up. I could show you that the, uh, that the, uh, the mining ratios coming out of the ground are seven to one. However, the paper ratios are like 88, 89 to one. So if it's coming out of the ground at seven to one, yet if you want silver, it's going to cost you 88 ounces of silver to get one ounce of gold. There's a mismatch here. So you have to pick, uh, there's something we put up on the website. It's called the road less traveled. And that's really the way I live my life. I don't want to go in the direction that everybody else goes. That's what that path is well known. I'd rather blaze my own trail and find my own way. And it's worked very well for me so far. And that's exactly what the poem says. So thanks for joining us on the journey. We have a few more of these, uh, these um, uh, emails that I'd like to read. But we do have a comment or a question right now, Margaret Ann. Yes, we have a question from Ghostwatch. <laughs> How do I convince my wife that 35% is not a loss when cashing out a 401k or IRA? I couldn't agree more. I mean, what's more important, 35% of the 65%, the inverse of it? Is 65% of something better than 100% of nothing Is if you're not holding it? What do you think, folks? Come on, why don't you weigh in? Does this make sense? Do you see where I'm coming from? If you don't hold it, you don't own it. So is it worth giving up 100% in order to save the 35% in taxes? at today's tax rate, when we all feel fairly certain that income taxes are likely to go up. So if, if the cost of something is gonna go up and you know you're gonna need it in the future, why not pay for it now? Like, let's suppose that you know that the cost of um, a soap is gonna go up and you're not gonna be using soap until the day you die, right? But it's really ex inexpensive right now. So load up on the soap, all right? So at any rate, um, what else do we have? Any other questions, comments, folks? Thanks very much. This is our first Mailbag Monday. Uh, we'll see how fast we move as far as getting the screen in here. We are talking to a couple of big companies that you've heard of, see whether or not they'd be interested in sponsoring the screen for us. And that way I can stand up and do some math and pull other, uh, the other slides in so you can see how it all pu pulls together. Okay. I got it up here. What I need to do is get up here into there, right into there. We'll get it. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun. It always is. Join us. We're going to be on Ron's uh, basement again this coming Friday for another fun, fun, uh, fun adventure. And the, the results that we're getting, thank you so much for supporting what it is that we do. We're telling you the truth. The truth is out there. Go to the website, tedspeaks.net. Take a look at what's there. Read The Road Less Traveled. It's a beautiful picture that's on the right-hand side as well. It gives you hope. Join us on this journey, folks. No charge. We'll talk about how you might be able to rise up and, and support our efforts later on. But at this point in time, we wanted to make sure that you knew that there's plenty of beef on the bone. And there is. And I think you're seeing that. What I mean is plenty of information, plenty of knowledge, plenty of facts that have been hidden from you. But again, write that term down, okay? It'll save you a lot of headache. In Terorum Clause, we'll talk about other things on the next podcast. Have a good evening. Okay.